What is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Che Cole, and I'm super excited to get into this episode. Not going to be a long one, just something I think um, is important to share on today and really uh, something that I think has, you know, really been pressed upon my heart uh, in terms of just the state of uh, modern day church, if you will, modern day Christianity, even. Um, but really, as the title suggests, I want to talk about from from audience to army. And what I mean by that is what we see today um, in a lot of cases is uh, a lot of spectatorship, right? I don't even know if that's a word, but a lot of spectators within the kingdom of God in terms of we come and we only uh, receive a word. We, we listen to a podcast. We listen and watch YouTube channels and, and YouTube sermons. We have our favorite pastors, our favorite preachers, and, and all these different things, right? Nothing wrong with having uh, that time and being. I'm grateful and I'm glad that we are uh, hearers of the word, but now it is time to be doers of the word as well. And so uh, really, when we talk from audience to army, this is kind of just an introduction to um, just something I don't want to go too deep into uh, everything on today on, in this episode, uh, but really to just leave you with some thoughts, leave you with some uh, things to, to look at in your own walk, in your own journey, just really quick as we um, spend this time together on this podcast. Um, but yeah, so there's a, an abundance of, you know, spectators, um, people who come and, uh, receive the word, right? But do we actually take that next step to be doers of the word? That's the question that begs asking, um, when we look at our own walk, what am I doing, uh, to do my part in fulfilling the great commission, right? What am I doing? Uh, on my behalf. And I think we have to eliminate, to even start, we have to eliminate the um, assumption that because I don't hold the, the title pastor, preacher, uh, you know, go down the list of ministry titles that you can have, where I don't hold this position, I'm not in leadership, that I think that I am not uh, supposed to uh, go ye therefore and make disciples, that I'm not uh, supposed to be equipped and trained and, and well groomed, if you will, for the work of ministry. And um, it's it's a lot that could go into that. It could be uh, the way that we've been conditioned, the way that we've uh, come to know and enjoy church, right? Uh, that uh, I think a lot of times we think that because I serve in, in whatever capacity at my church, that is enough. Right. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm glad that you're supporting the local church. I'm glad that you are a part of a local body and doing the things that you have to do to uh, sustain that place, because that is the place that a lot of people will come to first. Right. But what about the people who are not coming to the church? What about the people who uh, are at your job, who are at your school, who are at in your day-to-day -day life, in your day-to-day -day journey, when you go to Walmart, when you go to Target, when you go to whatever place it is, right? What about those people? What about the people that see you day-to-day? -day? What about the people on your social media accounts? What about those people who don't have uh, the knowledge or who didn't grow up in church even? What about those people? Are you equipped to have those conversations? Are you equipped to help lead them to Christ? Are you equipped to help guide them in the precepts and the things uh, of, of Christ and the knowledge of Christ? Because, as Hosea tells us, uh, my people are destroyed by a lack of knowledge, right? And that is what we're seeing today in many cases. Uh, the reason why we're dealing with so many things, right? The reason why, uh, as I talked about a couple of weeks ago, now, why are, why are you dealing with that? Why are we dealing with this, right? Because of this lack of knowledge, because of uh, not being able to understand or not being uh, aware that some of the things that we're dealing with are spiritual and that they, that they were paid for, right? Um, so when I have this ignorance, if you will, to the things that are taking place, uh, I approach 
certain things from a, a different lens. And um, this is why uh, there's an abundance of divination and, and uh, divining practices such as chakras and crystals and sage and horoscopes and all these different things that can run rampant and, and even infiltrate the church in the form of the Holy Spirit Ouija boards and things of that nature because we haven't uh, properly properly taught one uh, or we want the feel good messages all the time to where I have enough to get me through the week, but I don't have enough to uh, discern what is actually taking place in the world. Right. And so uh, that is why I think there's a push that we have to go from audience to army in the fact that there has to be an equipping. There has to be a training. There has to be uh, some sense of um, of of just thinking through of uh, preparing yourselves, uh, studying to show yourself approved. Right. Knowing how you approach these things. How do I pray? How do I uh, deal with this situation? How do I have this conversation? How do I discern these different things? And I think that's the, you know, the wrestling piece that I talked about a few weeks ago that I'm, I'm really having is because I'm seeing these things. I'm hearing these things. I'm listening to people talk. Um, those who may be professing Christians or those who uh, may say they are Christian or are not Christian or believe in God, whatever the case may be, dealing with these different things. And like this is not of God. This isn't uh, appropriate. So how do we handle these situations and how do we handle these things? And, and shout out to my brother, uh, Kevin Wilson, as always. But that's why things like podcasts in the park become so important, so critical, is because you start to see um, that it's not limited. The gifts aren't limited to the four walls of the church, but you can have praise and worship in the park, that you can see people set free in the park, that the gifts do not cease because you've stepped foot outside of this uh, thing that we've confined God into. Right. And so when I say from audience to army, this is really to push you into thinking of how how might I in my own journey, in my own walk, be better equipped to handle the challenges in this world and to handle the things in this society that uh, I'm seeing in, in my friend's life, in my family's life and uh, people close to me's life. Right. We have to have uh, a sort of uh, mentality that suggests that we're on assignment wherever we go, right? That it's not limited to, oh, I saw the person at church today um, and they came for the first time and I was able to witness to them. Yes, congratulations, kudos to you. I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad they came to church. I'm glad you were able to minister to them in that place. But what about outside of those walls? What about outside of that place? What? What about outside of those things? Are you equipped to do uh, the work of ministry, right? And this is where we really start to talk about leadership uh, even because Ephesians 4 and 11, when it talks about the fivefold ministry, it says that he's given some to be apostles, prophets, um, teachers, you go down the fivefold, right? For the work, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry is what it says for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. So really, when we're talking about fivefold ministry, when we're talking about leaders, uh, it is not so that we become uh, those parishioners, those who attend church. It is not so that we become stagnant, that we become complacent in our journey. I went to church. I checked the box. Right. I got the word that I need for my week for myself. No, it is for the work of ministry so that I need to be equipped as a person who is a believer. I need to be equipped to then go ye therefore as the Great Commission is. And so that's what I want to read to you is uh, the Great Commission, right? Matthew 28, verse 16. This is New King James Version. Um, it says, then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee to, to the mountain, which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So that is the Great Commission, right? All authority has been given to Jesus in heaven and earth. So go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. That is the charge. That is the push that we as believers have. 
to go you there for and make disciples. But we have to be equipped ourselves. We have to be trained ourselves. We have to be studied ourselves to know these different things, right? So the push, the press that I really have and the challenge that I really have for you is uh, how are you going about the Great Commission? How are you going about fulfilling this? It is not about having a title. It's not about having a position. It's not about having uh, this uh, name tag or, or logo or, or whatever the case may be. But as you become a believer, once you have once you have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the, the mission, the goal is to go you therefore and make disciples of all nations. Right. And so I really want to encourage you that even as you go about, you know, your day to day, stop worrying about uh, when this title, when this position, when this role is going to happen. The Lord has said, go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations. Now do it in decency and order. But what do you need to work on? What do I need to work on evangelizing more? Right. Being better, speaking to strangers, asking them about their relationship with God. Do they know Christ? Is there a way that I can, can I pray for you? It, that's as simple as that. Can I pray for you? Right. And pray in the name of Jesus. Right. So as you listen to this podcast, as you uh, it, it may not be evangelism, it may be teaching. Maybe uh, you're you, you need to become more studied so that you can teach some of your peers, some of your friends, some of your family members, uh, some of the things that you have learned through Christ, right? No longer hoarding on to information for yourself because that was good to me, but can it be good? Is it good for someone else? Can it be applicable to somebody else? Some of you, every time you get a word, you think it's for somebody else and you don't think it's for you. <laughs> That's a whole nother story. But anyway, for the equipping of the saints, that's Ephesians 4 and 11, right? That is uh, where we get the five folk ministry. And 12 says, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of faith and of knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of stature of the fullness of Christ. I got to read 14, <laughs> that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head of Christ. All right. I'm going to stop right there. Uh, but we can't be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, every new trend that comes out, every uh, the little evil eye things and all these different things are divination. So we have to be well equipped, well prepared to understand and unpack these things. And so this episode was really just to charge you uh, to say, let's take let's take a step. Let's go from audience to army that we are now empowered to be equipped whatever it is that you need to do. And I'm going to spend some time at some point on this podcast, helping you develop in different areas of, of ministry of life. Right. Um, because the role, let's just go ahead. I say this all the time, right. Is full-time ministry is not when you work for the church. Full-time ministry for every believer begins when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and savior. Right. I understand that you may have to go through a discipleship process in terms of learning and growing and knowing the word for yourself. But as you continue to do that, as you grow, there's it's not about a place of arrival is about teach what you know. <laughs> That's all you if you if it's only one word that you know. Right. You should. One word that you should know is that Jesus saves. Right. That is it. <laughs> um, so helping people understand that concept, that may be all that you have to give, right? But give that. Let's go from audience to army. We are now equipped. We are soldiers, right? Come on, somebody. So where, where my season saints at? We are soldiers in the army of the Lord, right? So let's go from audience to army. What can we do each and every day? to help bring someone to Christ into the knowledge of Christ so that we're not tossed to and fro, that our friends aren't tossed to and fro, right? Discipleship, even if you remember back when I did the episodes on discipleship last year, discipleship is about, you should have someone who is more uh, seasoned in you or more equipped 
than you in a certain area or in in, in biblical knowledge. You should have someone um, that is, uh, and it's not about levels, but someone who may be newer in the faith, right? Someone that you can train, someone that you can help groom and, and, and grow within the faith, and someone that you look up to as well. It, it should be like a ladder, right? Where we're each helping. As I ascend, they ascend with me. So let's take the next step to go from audience to army, no longer being spectators, no longer just being hearers, but doers of the word. So I hope this kind of sparked some thoughts into you. What area do I need to work on? What area do I need to grow in? Is it evangelism? Is it teaching? Is it prayer? Whatever area, there's many gifts within God. What area do I need to grow in? for my faith so that someone else can come into the knowledge of Christ so that I can be better equipped. Is it apologetics? Do I need to help wrestle with some of these questions that unbelievers have? Things of that nature, right? So that's going to do it for this episode. Um, as always, make sure you like and subscribe to the podcast on whatever podcasting platform you listen to it on. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube, uh, like the video, do all the YouTube stuff. Right. And follow us on Instagram, Facebook and TikTok at Cold Therapy. And yeah, until next time, I am your host, Che Cole. Appreciate everyone who's listening and supporting in any way, form or fashion. Uh, Until next time, I'm your host, Che Cole. Peace.